Let's have a look at the process here of collecting ground control points for the purpose of image geometric rectification. So what we've got here is on the left hand side I've got an image that has got coordinates attached to that and I know that either by looking at the cursor location um, numbers here so you can see the latitude and longitude values and also the it gives you the projection information there as well. Or also if I have a look in my available bands list, the image that I have on the left hand side here is this Im the second image up here and it has map information attached to it. Now the image that I put up on the right hand side doesn't have that map information attached to it. So if I was to look at the cursor location value, all I can see is the pixel values. I don't get any coordinate information there whatsoever. So what we'd like to do is to actually give the, the image on the right hand side the same coordinates. We'd like to have those attached to it so we can overlay our two images for example. This is a relati relatively simple process but it can take quite a while to, to do and to do properly. Now what I've actually got here is it, is it is the same image but I've just removed this map information from the image on the right hand side for the purposes of instruction and making it relatively simple. It, this isn't a, a perfect example and it's not something that you would do in reality when you're collecting ground control points or correcting an image. It's, it's unlikely that you would have one image that has, has coordinates and the next that doesn't. It's actually the exact same image. So th these might these in theory would be two different dates or something like that. So all we need to do is if we head up to map and then registration and you'll see we've got uh, various options for how we're going to register our images. So we're going to select this first one. We're going to collect ground control points from an image and, and use that on another image. Okay, if we had a map or if we had GPS coordinates field data, for example, we'd do that in a different way, but we're going to use the image to image correction at this stage. So we click on that one and basically it's asking us which image are we going to use as the base image, i.e. which one already has coordinates attached to it and which image is going to be the, the one that we need to correct. So our base image will be the one that's on the left hand side, so that's the one that has coordinates, which is our display number one. And display number two will be the one that we correct. And we click OK for that. Now this is our little ground, ground control point selection window and we're going to use this to have a look at the ground control points that we collect along the way. Now the idea when we're collecting a ground control point is that we would like the points to be visible and clear in both images, so the one that has coordinates and one that doesn't. And also we'd like it to be a stable feature, so one that doesn't change over time. So road intersections, for example, are good points to use, whereas water line or, um, or crop boundaries are not necessarily so good. So let's just go for example, we'll head to downtown Darwin here and we click on the same area in both images and you can see quite clearly that they're oriented in different ways. So we can use any of the three, the scroll, the image or the zoom window to navigate around and once we've found a feature that we can identify in both images, uh, we'll put our cursor over the top of that. Uh, so I'm going to pick this, this patch of green uh, green field just here for example and I'll find that exact same place in my second image as well so that's this spot over here and I try and get my cursor if you have a look at the zoom window which is a little bit hard in this display here I try to get the the crosshair directly over the feature that we're suggesting is the same in both in both images here so we'll click on that there and once we've got the cursor on both both zoom windows in the same in the same place we go to our ground control point selection window and click add point okay so we, we do this and the idea is to collect points over all of your image so all the way around the borders and in the middle of the image etc as much coverage as possible and you continue to add points as you go. So I'm going to pick another one here just for 
just for the purposes of providing an example, you should be able to, you'll spend a little bit more time and, and collect much, much better control points than what I'm going to do for the purposes of example here. So say we've got another one there and I'll click add point. Now if I decide that I've, I've actually clicked on a point that I'm, I'm not quite happy on the location, what I can do at any point in time, I can just, I can move where that crosshair is. So say I've got this number two, that's my control point there. I can move where the crosshair is. And if I go to show list in the ground control point selection window, and highlight number two as a row there, we'll go to that one. If I move my cursor to the new location where I would like it to be and click update, you'll see that that point will move and you'll see values change in the table. So let's have a look at this table a little bit. It's got information about both the first and the second ground control points that I've entered already. And if you expand it out, the, what we're interested in are these error values. And as you continue to collect points, you'll see these error values change. There's no error value or RMS root mean square error listed here just yet because there's only two points. As you continue to build points, it will be able to understand the equation that it's going to use for the correction and you'll start seeing an error value there. And we're aiming to get a value of less than, less than one pixel there. If you start seeing that the error is getting a little bit high, you might want to move your ground control points around a little bit using the update that I just showed before. Or you might see that there's a particular point that's just completely wrong. So we'll just click on that row there, for example, and hit delete, and you lose that point. So we no longer see that in our display group, and it's not in the table either. When you get enough points, you can also use this little predict button which will give you an idea of, of where the, the software and looking at its correction equation where it thinks the next point should be, should be placed based on where you are in one image. So if I was to quickly go through and add a couple of points, I'm not being too careful here about exactly where the points are, um, but I'll just add a few points in here. be really rough here. So you'll see that this predict button now becomes available now that I've got three points. So if I was to put in my left hand view for example I put my cursor on this particular point here and click predict and now we'll see in the right hand viewer it's predicted where it thinks that that point should be. Now you need to be careful about using this tool because it may not be in the correct location. As you can see where my cursor is in my, my left zoom window and in the predicted one it's quite a way off. So we'd perhaps put, this is not a very good feature to use as it's potentially variable due to tides but I'm using this for, for the purposes of showing the predict tool. So let's just grab another point for example and use predict and let's see how close it gets. And again we're not on the same point there so you'll see that there are some errors in using this, but it will get you in the ballpark area. So the idea is to get as many points as you can and start building up those ground control points, move them around a little bit, delete ones that aren't that great, and make sure you get as much coverage as possible before you apply the correction equation, which we'll go through next.